What's up guys? So I wanted to share a little project I did with uh, our fire extinguisher mounting it. Um, when we first picked up the truck, they had the fire extinguisher mounted on the other side over here and next to this seat, but a little bit in the way. And it was a big old ugly red one. We found this one at Ace Hardware, just a silver color. It's more, it was called the designer uh model so you don't have just, just this big old honking red thing and it was a lot skinnier so we like this um one thing about it is is it's rated for what we haul we do a lot of hazmat sometimes and the rating for hauling hazmat is a, a, a minimum rating of 10 BC. And one of the regulations with a haul, when, you're, when you have a fire extinguisher in the truck with DOT is it has to be secured to prevent any kind of movement. So it can't be rolling around, you know, kind of thing in your truck. Somebody had asked me on the pictures I posted on Facebook that they just had theirs Velcroed uh to a position which i think is fine because uh, the regulation states it just can't be moving around it just has to be secured i like having it next to the driver's seat i know a lot of i have a lot of friends and have heard people mention mounting it in one of their side boxes in their compartment of their sleeper that is questionable since the regulation states it has to be you have to be able to access it. So for us, we keep our side compartments locked all the time. So I guess it's left for interpretation, really, um, as long as it's mounted. Um, I'm sure their uh, DOTs aren't throwing a fuss about it as long as you do have it mounted. But I like it having easy access right here. If something catches on fire, I can jump right out the seat unlatch this pull it out and go you know i don't have to unlock my door uh pull it out of the side compartment and all that but since we've been doing this job there, there has not been a really good mounting option on our m2 the floorboard from from the seat to the floorboard dropped down some so we had like a metal bracket right here that we were able to mount it to which is kind of good but whenever we would go or if we had had dot ask us well i need to see the level uh is it charged properly you know is there enough level in there and is it is it um ready to put out some fire so that i would have to take it off show the officer just big pain in the butt so i came up with this bracket over the weekend and i really love it i took a piece of metal and we're going to show you how we do this with this it's called flat bar aluminum or aluminum flat bar i picked up uh it was like a 36 maybe 38 inch piece i cut it in half and then i made this bracket for the fire extinguisher to mount on the main reason i wanted to make a bracket like this is because our battery uh, quick disconnects are right here on the floorboard so we have two of them, one for the sleeper and then one for the truck. And while I can not I can reach under here and go ahead and flip it across or I can reach it from the backside. But basically what this bracket does is helps elevate it and helps, allows me to mount something over it. Now in the process of making this mount, one thing I realized is I can spin it around too to any direction I like. Now, while this is skinny, this part is fat, you know, and, and you can't mount it directly on the floorboard just like this. You have to have it on the side like that. So what we're gonna do today is make a secondary one for the other side because the other side is uh, directly mounted to the floorboard. Before we go do that, I wanna tell you a funny story. <laughs> <laughs> so this was a big goof. Uh, one thing you definitely want to make sure when you're mounting the bracket or anything to the floor is when you're going up underneath that you don't hit anything. And I did that. You know, I took a look at it. I'm like, oh, okay, uh, we should be good. Well, lo and behold, there was an airline ran under the flooring in between under there and this flooring and padding and stuff there was an airline that ran through there going to the seat my luck i drilled directly straight through that airline now luckily it was only a, it was an airline about that long you know i ran down to the freight local freight liner here in waco and i picked up another one and but i had to take all this paneling out i had to remove this bar and 
remove the, the quick disconnect uh, battery switch and to be able to get the flooring up to get to the airline to even change it. What a pain in the butt. Before you go mounting something like this in your truck, make sure that airline is not back there because it was a pain in the butt to fix. Or at least make sure you have an extra airline on hand. <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and uh, walk over to the other side. I'll show you uh, what we have over there and then we're gonna make this bracket. All right, so if you see, we got our uh, secondary fire extinguisher mounted over here. Now you may wonder, why do we have two fire extinguishers? Well, safety, you know, <laughs> you never know. We've never had to use either one of them, but the day we do, uh, I wanna have a secondary on hand. If the first one puts the fire out, I don't have to run to a store right away and pick up a second one because I'm not legal, legally compliant anymore. Or if the first one doesn't put the fire out, I got a secondary one to continue fighting the fire. If you see, it's mounted directly to the floor and I can't turn it. I can't turn it sideways. And I'm worried about this handle thing getting punched in with the seat right there. So we're gonna make another bracket for it to go right here and go ahead and mount it to it. This stuff's really easy to bend. It's easier when you heat it up. So we got a little torch, cheap torch propane that we bought from the Home Depot. All right, so a few things that you're gonna need to do this is uh, you know, cheap propane canister and then a torch. They make multiple different kinds of these. Uh, I think combined, it was like 20, 30 bucks, but this is probably the most expensive part. You can get these for really cheap at Walmart. This one, has a clicker on it, so that helps light it so you're not having to use a lighter. Uh, and then of course a dial to turn the flame up or down. You're gonna need some gloves because holding on to metal, uh, when it gets hot, it, it don't feel good. And then uh, I'm just using a pair of pliers. Uh, there's, you could use like um, a vise. If you have a vise, if you're, I mean, I don't have a vise in the truck or anything, so I'm just gonna be using a pair of pliers. If you want to measure it and measure where you're, you're gonna try to do your bends, you can. I'm really not going to. I kind of, after doing the first one, I kind of got an idea of where to uh, bend it at and how much uh, room I need, so. You what forgot I, the most important thing you need. What? A handy, a handy helper. handy assistant. You need a handy assistant. <laughs> Especially on a windy day like today because you don't want this thing falling over. Take the top off that. Screw this down on top. Make sure it's nice and snug. Now you don't have to heat this stuff for very long. I am using my Landstar Team Safety Gloves so I don't burn my fingers. Now I'm going to hold it as far away from the metal as I can. And then we're just gonna heat up without burning my beard, okay? Okay. Let's not burn my beard. <laughs> try to keep that. I would never. Try to keep that uh, pointed off to a side or something. Right. Yeah, there we go. Or this way, point it this way, because I'm. Let get it lit. Okay. So, I am just gonna heat it back and forth. I'm gonna do this for about 30 seconds. Slow moving motions back and forth. Hopefully you can see this on camera. Tilt it down some. There we go. Basically what we're doing is just getting the metal nice and soft. It is aluminum so it doesn't take too much. You do want to get your bend right the first time. And, and believe me, I am far from any metal bending expert. Uh, I looked up on a YouTube video of how to do this, uh, watched a couple of them and said, ah, yeah, I could probably do that. That's funny, I can already still, I can already feel some of the warmth coming down the metal. All right, now I'm gonna grab the end here and give it a band. Just like that. Nice and simple, got me a nice 90 degree turn. Now what I'm gonna do next is heat along right here 
and then bend this bottom part out to give me something to uh, drill down into and mount to the floor. So go ahead and light her back up. A little too much. Then the end piece is going to be a little bit more trickier to. No, nope, that looks that looks good. So I got a little bit of a lip there to be able to drill holes into. Don't touch that. No. Drill holes into to be able to mount it, and then we got our elevated point. So now all we're going to do is do the other end. Actually, I'm gonna let this cool off real quick so I can handle this side a little better. It's not perfect, you know what I mean? But it will work out. And once I, once I finish the bend, I'll set it down on this uh, metal table and kind of make sure it's uh, level, you know, so it's got a good, nice level mount to it. I may do this side a little bit taller too. We'll, um, we'll see. Just because I want to give that handle enough room to bend down over the side on this side. So rub it off and cool it off a little bit. It's nice that it's a cool day out today. So this is going to at least help it cool down a little better. Um, if you also wanted to do, you could grab a <laughs> file and file down this end some a little bit. This side doesn't need it, but since I had taken a long piece and cut it in half, um, it's a little bit jagged, so I may find my file and take a file to that. All right, we are ready to start bending the other side. I'm gonna do this basically the same thing. Up a little. Now heating the metal just makes it easier to bend. Could you bend this without heating it? Possibly. I don't know if it would be as clean as a band, but maybe if you had um, if you had a vise that you could put it into, you might be able to get a really clean bend that way. I did see one YouTube video where the guy used a vise, and then he used a hammer to hammer it. But anytime fire is involved, you can count me in. First bend always, oops, I get it in the frame there. It's a nice 90 degree bend, you know. The, the shorter end part, it's a little bit more difficult, but not too bad. Going to light her back up. I'm sure there's some metal working guys out there that are gonna shake their head at this video but it works i'm not trying to be a professional metal worker bender guy <laughs> i'm just trying to make something work for our truck and i liked how the first time came out so i figured i'd do it for the second one as well There we go. Man, that one turned out better than this side. We're straight now. Now, with the problem with using the pliers is it tends to bend more in the middle, in the middle part more than the outside. So you just have to straighten that up a little bit. Now, all I'm doing is uh, just kind of final tweaking it. This side's bent a little more. Now I'm just rocking it back and forth, make sure I have it somewhat level. Boom. No rock back and forth or nothing. So it doesn't rock 
back and forth this way too bad. I mean, it's not perfect, but once I get it mounted, it's gonna do the job pretty nicely. Now, one thing I'll do is I'm gonna take my cutter to it and kind of round out these uh, edges a little bit on both sides, just to give it a nicer, cleaner look so it doesn't look all janky and redneck made. Not that there's anything wrong with rednecks. Rednecks are cool, but hey, it's just a backyard fix for and solution for a problem we had, so I like it. I'm gonna get my drill out and drill bits, and I'm gonna pre-drill holes in this. Well, actually, I'm gonna grind it first. I'm gonna grind it up, then get the drill bits out and drill some holes, and then we'll uh, take the fire extinguisher mount and mark it on here so we know where to drill the holes on this. So I'm probably gonna use two rivets, but then on the front part, I'll show you, we'll, we'll get to that. All right, right now, what I'm doing is I'm using the, the mount that I'm mounting this to the bracket as a template, and I'm gonna mark it with a Sharpie, just like that, so I know where to drill my holes at. Now on these holes, there was no, I mean, I just put them as wide apart as possible, so when I mount it, there's not a whole a lot of side-to-side -side motion but these you definitely got to mount uh, drill properly so they're all lined up and I'm going to be using rivets on these two and then I'm going to use a screw with a locking nut on this side. The reason being is I can't get my rivet gun down inside this right here down inside there so I'll use the screw there but I'll rivet these two. I love my Milwaukee tools. I got these drill bits that just lock right in works perfect all right one thing i do recommend the uh, the screws that you're using to mount the bracket to the floor uh use some uh, stainless steel ones because they are going to protrude out through the bottom of the floorboard and you don't want them getting all rusty and nasty so uh, we're going to be using some self tappers self tapping So we're gonna be using some self tappers to mount the bracket in. I am gonna to try to go a little bit back just so it is out of the way of entering in and out of the truck, but not so far back where you can't get to it. Again, I'm using my handy Milwaukee tool. Thank Heather for letting me get this. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored. <laughs> Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mount this bracket all the way up against this thing, against this kick plate, just right up against that. So it's further, far enough out of the way of the door. Um, we have already tested it on the other side. The door will still be able to close with it right there as well. Now I did make sure that there are no airlines or electronics or anything under here before doing it, uh, the airline for this seat comes across under the padding across to the back of the seat, so we are safe. We got the, the bracket mounted in there. Give it a little bit of a vacuum, but nice, strong, solid surface for it. So next we're gonna mount the holding bracket. This wraps around the container and holds it in place. Now I ended up using a self-tapping screw on this side because I couldn't find a, a bracket. One of the reasons I didn't want to do that cause, is because then now it's sticking out underneath. It's not going to affect anything. It's just a personal preference. I think it looks weird, but um, next time I'm at Home Depot, I'll buy some more screws with locking um, bolts or nuts that go on them, but we're going to rivet these two. One down. And if you see, if you look underneath, the rivets nice and flush underneath so it's going to hold it in there nice and good. And put our fire extinguisher in. 
Boom. Nice mounted fire extinguisher. Now, one thing that Heather mentioned and I'll show you is, you can't see the level on this side, but you can on the other side. And that's the most important part. This is just a secondary. Um, you can spin it around to take a look at it if an officer does ask to look, but a lot easier than having to pull the whole thing out. Now, this thing will swivel that out of the way. Now, plenty of room to close the door. We'll give this a nice vacuum, but it's a nice clean install, I think. You know, the, the bracket matches uh, the extinguisher. It, it just match uh, the silver with the black. I think it matches better. I just think it's a cool, cool idea. If you guys want to try this project yourself, do it at your own risk. I am not a professional. Um, I just wanted to make something that looked good with the new truck and makes sense, you know. So, hope you guys liked the video. Thank you guys, as always, for watching and subscribing. Until our next video. Peace, love, and expediting.